Hello and welcome to the Stamp Around UK uh, vlog hop. I'm Linda Ellis from lindaspapercraft.co.uk and this month's theme is anything but flowers, which is not good for me because I'm a Mrs Flowers. I love my flowery cards. Um, and then I remembered I'd done this card in class quite recently and they wanted a fun fold class did Magnet Ladies. So um, I did this, which is actually a waterfall waterfall and i've made lots of waterfall cards and this is the easiest one i've ever done it's the least faffy um and really packs a punch in fact i liked it so much that um my parents had their diamond wedding um a week ago and uh, I actually made them a card, not with puffins, but with um, congratulations. And I put a 60 and then you two were meant to be together um, on the uh, on the waterfall. And uh, they really liked it. So uh, there we go. So we're going to go and make this now. And we're going to change the colourway up a little bit, largely because this is the... Um, the waves of the ocean designer series paper which was only available for a little time and i have used all mine up because <laughs> i loved it so much i just wish it had gone into the annual catalog unfortunately it hasn't but there are some beautiful papers anyway so what i'm going to use instead is i'm actually going to go really change and i've used this uh, DSP which is from the hostess pack of DSP loads of colors loads of different patterns and I just thought this was suitable because we've got birds flying that it would go with the puffins and then um, yeah really off piste I decided to go with real red um, partly because I've used the real red to color in the puffins beaks and I thought that would turn with it and I thought it'd be a lovely contrast right so let's get started That was the sun returning my tape measure, which is, it makes a change. Normally they disappear into the uh, ether. So you are going to need to make this card. Well, the first thing you're going to need is a 13 and a half centimetre square blank, um, which you can make yourself uh, out of um, a piece of A4. So that would be what, 27 centimetres by 13 and a half, scored at 13 and a half. Um, so uh, that's the card blank and then a piece of A4 and this you can, if you cut it correctly, this is all you need. Okay, so um, don't worry about the measurements now because I will put them on my blog, um, but um, I will show you now how to cut it so that you can get everything you need from this piece of paper or card so you are going to cut it into three strips so the first one's going to be 12 and a half centimeters there the second one is going to be spot the person reading the instructions nine centimeters and then the third one is five centimeters so that's 12 and a half, nine and five. As I say, you don't need to worry because these will be on my blog and the link for that is down below. While I'm talking about links down below, because this is a, a vlog hop, it's a video hop, um, lots of my Stamping Up friends, we've all got together and um, we're all publishing a video on the 1st of June at six o'clock. So um, all the links for the other blogs will be in my description. So you can just click along and um, see what everyone else has done. Uh, it's really exciting because we don't know what everyone else has done either. So it's really interesting to pop around and get some amazing inspiration. So so from the 12 and a half centimetre uh, wide piece, I'm going to cut a 12 and a half centimetre square. So that's your background. And then I'm also going to cut an eight centimetre square. So eight by eight. Okay. Then from the nine centimetre square, uh, centimetre strip, I'm going to cut a square that's nine centimetres square. And then one off the top of my head. Yep, seven centimetres square. 
and this way you can get all of your squares that you need out of one piece of card okay so then you need to cut while we're still cutting three white squares so this one is eight and a half centimeters uh, square and to save time I've already stamped and colored in my puffin so that's the front one this one is seven and a half centimeter square and this one is six and a half centimeter square so again I've done all the stamping and coloring because you know how to stamp and color in uh, and you can use any motive as I said I've done it as an anniversary card any motive you want on those squares and once you've worked out how to do this you can do this you can change the size of the squares as well so right so I'm going to do some gluing now and as you can see the red squares that I've cut out just fit nicely underneath my puffins okay so I'm just going to stick those together now with a little bit of my dual purpose glue So the dual purpose glue, if it doesn't come into contact with another piece of paper, it dries sort of tacky. So if it contacts another piece of paper, it dries permanently. But if um, you put it on one side of the card and leave it, it dries tacky. Uh, now, I've never used that property. However, my ladies want me to do a class on gilding flakes. Um, which we have in the catalogue um, and uh, this is one way of putting them on apparently putting the glue on letting it dry and then rubbing the gilding flakes on so I shall be using its other property soon okay so we're just gluing those on there and I was going to call this video the easiest waterfall mechanism because it really is the easiest one I've done and it relies solely on this strip of card so I did see it on Pinterest and I will um, pop the link of the lady who did the first one I saw into the uh, details below so you can pop along to hers she did it very slightly differently and um, she also used the stitched so sweetly framelits which are now retired so, um, what else? Oh, I can glue this on here as well. So I'm just going to glue this onto, so this is the 11 and a half centimetre square. Now, the lady that I saw doing this did actually cut the hole in the DSP, not the card, but I find it's a bit stronger if you cut the um, them both together so I glue them first okay oops just leak a bit now just gonna let that dry a minute okay so checking we're still videoing quick slurp of coffee obviously so right so whilst that's drying I'm just going to now turn my attention to the mechanism so you've got a piece of card which is now 21 centimeters by five so basically the width of a piece of A4 and I'm just going to bring my trimmer in again and we're going to do some scoring this time so we are going to score at six seven and eight centimeters so making sure you've got your score in place six seven and eight centimeters okay so that is at six seven and eight so you've got a long piece here short piece here you want to keep it that way up with the long piece short piece rather to your right and I'm just going to fold normally I would use a bone folder but it appears to have disappeared why is it you can never find what you want <laughs> hmm? 
my okay so, so I've folded and let's imagine I've burnished those three folds there so the first thing I'm going to do is stick the smallest square on this area here so just going to pop some glue on that square you do need to make sure you're not oozing out that way so a little bit of glue there we go and I'm going to pop the smallest square just shy of that scored line so the scored line is just there so I'm centering it vertically roughly and needs to be down a wee bit there we go and just lining up with that score line so there's just a little bit of that score line showing if you can just see it's just a tiny weeny bit proud not much okay so and then we're going to stick the second piece on here and the third piece on there so again just i'm just putting a bead of glue down the middle Okay, because you don't want it easing out because it'll mess up your um, mechanism. And then popping on the second square, making sure it's straight and up to the line. We've done there. So it should just about cover the square underneath. Okay, and then coming along with our final square. And as I say, I've made quite a few of these cards, so this is really the, the best order to do it in um, after a few practices. And then I'm just sliding that so it's just up to the final score line. Still nice and straight. There we go. And I'm just checking too soon. <laughs> the mechanism does work. Yeah, nothing's sticking to itself. So that's fine. So I'm now going to put that to one side to dry and return my attention back over here. I'm going to get my trimmer out. So you need a slit for the mechanism to go through. If you have this punch, which is now retired, that's perfect because you literally, oh, I can open it, just slide it up as far as you can in the middle horizontally and click. However, this punch isn't available anymore. So I'm going to show you how to do it with your trimmer. But any dye that that sort of shape, anything sort of that's going to give you a long thin slit, as long as it's not longer than this, ideally shorter than the um, six and a half centimetres that one is, um, then it's fine. You just need to put it here. So, but let's do it with a trimmer. Okay, so. La -de -da -de -da -de -da, if you don't have the punch right so vertical cut three centimeters from the right hand side starting at three and a half and ending at nine so three centimeters in and then lining up your little line i bet i'm not on screen here let me just yeah we are yeah, except my hand's in the way. <laughs> so I'm just lining it up three centimetres in. Okay. And start at three and a half and end at nine. So there's a little arrow, a little snick on your trimmer here. You need to line that up with three and a half centimetres. Now I have the metric um, guide the original one comes in inches, um, so you'd have to convert that if you were in inches. Um, and I have actually put, this is white card, I cut a piece, uh, one centimetre wide and just taped it to the underside so I can see the scale better. We're going from three and a half to nine. Ooh. Holding onto your card as well, so it doesn't go with it. And then I'm moving over a centre, centimetre rather, so going to four. And then I'm going from nine, nine back down to three and a half. So we're at nine, back down to three and a half. There we go. So we've got two parallel lines there. Now you can go back in with your trimmer and cut them. But I think I'm just going to do it. It would help if I got, oh, I have gone all the way around, all the way down. 
so I'm just going to do with a pair of scissors because it's all going to be hidden anyway. So I've just got my snips and if we just slide them in and get them as near as we can to the end, there we go. And this one's going to be a bit easier because it's already done. So I'll do that. Actually, probably what I should have done was snip in the middle and then I could have done the edges. Okay, so I'm just neatening that up. I don't think I pressed hard enough when I did the second cut, so I'm just going in to finish that off. This is why my mummy always said do not use the tip of your scissors to cut things because it gets it ends up blunting them first right okay so there we go we have it's not the neatest slit you've ever seen but you're not going to be able to see it once the mechanism's done right so now <laughs> we need dimensionals and we need them by the ton so i'm just going to get out a couple of sheets I want to go, haven't I? Ah, there we go as well. Right, so. And it is literally. You want to keep it away from the mechanism. You know, I am going to step back a minute. <laughs> Don't put the dimensionals on yet. You want to put your mechanism in. So going through the slit with the long end what you then want to do is center your puffins on the front of your card okay like that and then you're going to glue this edge just this edge on the smallest square you're just going to put some glue on there you don't want it all over just on that edge there so we'll just pop that on just on there and then we're going to flop the whole lot over keeping hold of everything and making sure you're still centered there and just gluing that down okay so it's just that edge that's glued down and you'll gently pull you can see that that is how the mechanism works so it's just anchored on that far edge of that square okay now you can put your dimensionals on because you can see where they need to go do not mess with your mechanism so none on here at all otherwise it won't work obviously so but you do need to have that distance so you can get hold of the tab. So, and it needs to be, you know, anything that's um, sort of interactive, it needs to be really well glued down because let's face it, everybody's just gonna be pulling that backwards and forwards and you do not want your card falling apart. So I am literally, I am not a big dimensional user. I'm one every corner in the middle normally. Um, but I think on this one, it deserves a few more because it needs to be able to. Uh, one sneaky one in the corner there. Just going. So I'm going to put some just on the edge. There. Uh, another one there and then I'm just going to fill these gaps in so as I say quite a lot of dimensionals for me and now this is going to go on the card so we're going to take all these off Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. It all helps with the algorithm. And if you press the bell as well, you'll get notifications when I put on a new video. 
and also as I say check out the other videos because there'll be some amazing ideas and um, there always is on this blog hop uh, or vlog hop sorry videos and also if you put a comment that would be really helpful too and you can also go check out check out my blog um for all the measurements and everything all right lost my card base there it is okay so i'm just going to fold my card base hmm. it is a mystery where my um, foam folders from right so and i'm just going to now pop this on the front straight if i can come off come off come off come off i always say it's not fully on Ugh. until you've pressed it down oh spectacular it's on in that corner come off thank you <laughs> let's try again Excuse my head. I have gone a bit that way. Right. It should be a little bit that way, but it doesn't matter. But what does matter is the envelopes that go with these card lengths are only slightly bigger. Um, so I do need to get rid of this, um, but leave enough that you can still pull it. But how cool is that? That is just so cool. So I'm just going to pop it in my trimmer. Now you can embellish the tag, you can use um, maybe a tag punch to decorate it and put a hole in it so you can put some thread in it like I've done with the other one there. In fact, I think I will do because I've cut that off quite short. So, hole punch. Never a hole punch when you need one. Right, let's just pull that out. <clears throat> Trusty hole punch. <laughs> so, and I'm just lining that hole up. So it's sort of in the middle. She says, hopefully. Oh, but never mind. And then I'm going to use some linen thread just to put it in. And what I've done to make it more like a tassel, I actually folded it a couple of times and then posted through from the front to the back. It's a very asymmetric hole that, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously it was a design idea. Okay, so we've got a little tassel there. I have left that quite long I might make it a little bit shorter but the you get the idea you know the person the, ooh, pull okay how cute is that so now on this one I used a retired punch so the holes in the middle and that's why I left this at five centimeters because then it does fit into most of our tag punches um, that we uh, had the other one I did um, when I used a hole punch for it is I rounded the corner with some corner rounders that um, I already had. So, but I hope you enjoyed that. Do look at everyone else's. Thank you for looking right to the end. <laughs> and uh, we shall see you next month. Take care. Bye.